if I told you my story. Same kind of different as me. It's a story based on my wife, Debbie, and her friendship and my friendship with Denver Moore, a homeless man that she had a dream about. Denver's story, for those of you that, that don't know the story, uh, began on a plantation in Red River Parish, Louisiana, where as a young teenage boy, a young innocent teenage boy, he was roped and dragged by the Ku Klux Klan for stopping to help a white woman change a flat tire on the plantation. I had another dream last night. Was it a good one or was it about me? It was about a poor wise man who changes the city. And I saw his face. Uh, my wife in 1998 had a dream about a homeless man who was wise. And by his wisdom, our lives and our city would be changed. And the next morning after this dream, she asked me to go into the inner city of Fort Worth, Texas to look for this man. But that unlikely man of her dream was named Denver Moore. He was called suicide on the streets and most people that knew him considered him to be the most dangerous man that ever walked the streets of Fort Worth, Texas. Hey! We have to talk to him. That's a man from my dream. What's your name? You don't need to know my name. Well, I'd like to know your name. But after months of pursuing him at Debbie's insistence, I might add, uh, he eventually became my friend. You'd be doing me a big favor to just be nicer. You want to be my friend? Uh-huh. But I'm going to have to think about that. It's a story of what we, uh, our publisher said. It's a homeless ex-con and a grieving millionaire thrown together to save each other. You know, a lot of people think I saved Denver. There could be nothing farther from the truth. Denver saved me from my arrogant, self-centered self. We mixed together the themes of black and white, of poverty and wealth, of a faithful wife, and unfortunately, a cheating husband. Martin told me about your friend. If you don't tell Debbie, I will. We've been married 19 years. We don't share the same life. We don't share anything. You can leave. You choose. But we mix all those together in a two-hour film, and what we come out with is a message of hope that we believe can really heal a nation. But the main point that I want people to come away with after they see our film is the fact is, no, it's not just the fact, it is the truth. It is not the color of our skin that divides us. It's the condition of our hearts. Come on, Ron. So I want to welcome to the stage the real-life guy that the movie is about. Say hello to my mom. Thank you. Ron, this film does not complete the story, correct? It's, uh, mm, it's hard to talk about it. I didn't know it was going to be this hard. No, it's not the ending of the story. Uh, after Debbie died, um, and, and I went back to the jungle, the hobo jungle, and I got Denver. But he came and he lived with me. Oh, help me, Lord. Uh, he came and he lived with me for the next 10 years. And he, he taught me so much. He, I have to say we were thrown together to save each other, mm. but he was the one who saved me. Like Denver says, when people get thrown off in life and they jump track and we judge them, he told me, he said, Mr. Ron, the courthouse is full of judges. God doesn't need any more of them. God is looking for servants. He became my professor and I was his student. His school was a dumpster in the inner city of Fort Worth. And the first morning I sat on the curb by him with the dumpster, he looked at me and he said, Mr. Ron, are you one of them Christians? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, then maybe you can answer this question that bothers all of us people on the streets. And I said, well, what is that, Denver? And he said, why is it all you Christians worship one homeless man on Sunday, then turn your back on the first one you see on Monday? And he said, you know, I was on the streets for 25 years and nobody ever asked me my name. He said, I was inhuman. I was invisible until Miss Debbie came. And she, it was, he said, it was the Christ in Miss Debbie that became the hope of glory for me. 
And it's the Christ in you here today that's the hope of glory for someone that maybe you haven't met yet either. Five years after she died, he was on the stage in the grand ballroom there receiving the award as the philanthropist of the year for the city of Fort Worth. And when he stood up, he said, a lot of people, y'all thought I was trash on your streets. He said, let me tell you something. My God is in the recycling business and he can turn trash into treasure. So thank you very much. God bless you. Let's all go turn some trash into treasure and make a difference in this city.